defense against a violent assault. And we're talking a lot of times about something like this. If the person's carrying a knife, you have this reach advantage when you carry your cane. So we're going to talk about reach advantage with the knife, we're talking about violent assault, but we're also going to talk about how to pick the best cane for you. And we're going to review two canes. This is the Cane Masters Oak Dojo Training Cane, and this is the Century Martial Arts Rattan Cane. And I'm going to show you which one I like, why I like each one, what the features are, so you can make your own decision. The fact is, I say have them both if you can. If you can't have them both, I'll show you how to decide which one's the best for you. And we're going to talk about striking combinations, talking about how to go from one can, the transition between strikes. This is requested by Tom. And then we have one more um, thing that we're going to talk about today, which is retention of the cane, how to retain your cane, keep it from getting ripped out of your hands when you're using it for self-defense against an assault. But one thing I want to show you first before we get started again, I always have to make sure that my butterfly knife, the balisong, is facing the right way so I don't slice myself like I did so much when I was a kid. But this doesn't bleed. Neither one of these canes bleed. One is a little bit softer, one's a little bit harder. Soft wood, hard wood. Both of them are great choices for self-defense against the knife because you have reach advantage. And what that means is this is longer than the blade on that knife. When you go to the, the strike, whether it's the fast cane or the hard cane, one's faster, one's a little bit harder. We'll talk about that in a minute. You have the ability to defend yourself very effectively with a self-defense cane or the everyday walking cane. So this is cane self-defense. We're gonna talk about first a couple of combinations. Good morning. It's good to see everybody this morning. The first combination, I'm just gonna give you two combinations. We're gonna talk about retention. I'm gonna show you how to pick the best cane with the basic cane review. What's the best fighting cane for you? We're gonna start here with this cane. This is the wood cane from Cane Masters. It's the Dojo cane. The link is below if you wanna go see this one or everything else. And you're going to start the first combination with the cane facing out. I want you to practice it like this. Put your weight on it. It's a great ergonomic position. It's just to the side. You're holding it here. We're gonna call this the threat. And from here, I'm gonna turn my hand up. And this part, the tip of the cane, is gonna go flying into the person's groin. So that's the first strike. And you're gonna combine that with the second strike, which is coming up and back. And if we talk about transition between strikes, hitting, you're gonna run into some resistance and it's gonna push you back. So you're gonna use that push back to set up for the next strike. It's just like a kick, it comes back and you kick again, or punch comes back and punches again. The transition, we're gonna shorten the transition by using full speed, full power, pushes it back. So you use what's happening naturally and you go into that second strike out of this three strike combo. Yeah, we're gonna do three strike combination. So we're gonna go one, back, two, and then it comes back and I want you to bring it up and over the top, just to the top of the head. So what I want you to think about when you're thinking about striking transitions, how do you go from one strike to the next? What does the combination look like? Use what's happening naturally instead of trying to fight against what's happening and changing hand positions to something else, go with what's happening. Use that. That's a smart way to fight for self-defense. When you're defending with the walking can against a violent assault, maybe a knife, someone, an attacker with a knife, multiple attackers, you bring it back. When you hit, it's pushing back. You come into the second strike, that pushes back. And then you bring it up and down over the top. This up and down over the top using this whole arm as a lever to create maximum force and power speed to destroy the target for self-defense. You're trying to end the fight with that last strike. You're gonna hit them in the groin, slow them down, hit them in the body, do some damage for self-defense, come down over top. One more time, this basic combination I want you to practice today with the hook or the crook facing out. The weight is here. They're coming in very quickly. You come up one, stop them in their tracks, two, bringing it back, and three, down on top. It looks like this on the other side. It's really just, it's the wrist and the arm bending. So bending the arm, bending the wrist, 
you have an acceleration here, you have an acceleration here, plus you have more leverage, more uh, power. So you have one, two, bringing it back around and down on top. Now you can see, I don't know if you heard it, I hit the ceiling a little bit. The limitation to this striking combination is just the height. But if you're outside, they catch you off guard. One, brings them down a little bit. One, two, up and over, and then around. Hit the ceiling again. Hard. That's a very hard, explosive, powerful strike. And the advantage of that striking combination with this cane is that because this is hardwood, there's not much flex. There's uh, it's, there's a lot more weight, and so when you're striking, you have more momentum. You have more stored energy, more power. It's not going to be as fast as the lighter cane, or you're not going to be able to move as fast, but it's going to be fast enough, especially this first one. That first one's very fast. That's very fast. And then over the top, just like using a big piece of wood, you've got a good, powerful grip here coming down, splitting them right through the middle for self-defense, and that ends the fight. Now, back to this idea of the knife using the butterfly knife. This is a little bit longer knife, a little bit longer blade. I wanted to show you this again. This is a hardwood. The hardwood doesn't bleed, doesn't feel that. This goes into your body, goes into your skin, slices everything. You lose ability to use your hand. If they hit the tendons, the nerves, you could bleed out very quickly. They can stab you with this, you're done. You let the, not, uh, the cane with the crook fight facing out, let that do the work of self-defense and create that distance, keep it back. So now the value and the benefit of the hard wood is that when you do these strikes, you're gonna have a lot more power, but it might be heavy for you. You might prefer the rattan. That doesn't make one better than the other. We're just talking about preference, right? Because it's different, I like to say it's not good, it's not bad, it's different. Let me show you the other feature I like so much about this one. There are a lot of raking raking across the body, across the nose, across the eyes for self-defense that you can do with this hard wood that you can't do. You can still rake. It's still going to create damage. This is going to create a lot more damage. So benefit to the oak cane, the cane masters, dojo training cane. That's the first link below in the description is just that hard striking force. Now I want to show you the second one. Always look at it. Make sure it's been a while since I played with these. Don't play with knives, by the way. But when you, when you start practicing your butterfly knife, you always have to make sure the blade is facing the correct uh, position. That's how you lock it. Same basic features, right? It's a little bit softer, so it's going to go in more. You're going to cut more fiber. And this is really a piece of grass. Rattan is grass. Oak is a tree. And that's the big difference. It's like the difference between bamboo and a tree. It, feel, it feels like wood, but it's not technically wood. It's a, they, they make wood products out of it because it gets so hard when they dry it. But uh, because it's a different kind of fiber, you have more flex, way more flex. You have longer fibers than you do in the wood. And they also are gonna cut a little bit easier. So the advantage goes the oak cane as far as durability goes. And um, the advantage through this rattan cane, you're gonna see it right here. I'm gonna show you the second combination strike is that you have speed, a lot more speed because you can move faster. Now you're still going to do a lot of damage. You're still going to be able to effectively defend yourself with the lighter cane. You're going to be able to move faster. It's not going to be as hard on your grip. You're going to be able to defend yourself with this cane. This is the second link below in that Century Martial Arts uh, uh, online store. But this cane is going to be able to move faster. It's going to be lightning fast almost like a collie stick or an escrima stick made out of the same material, but you give up strength and you give up just that devastating bone breaking crushing. You can still break bones with this, but not as easier or as easily as you would with that heavy, dense, thick hardwood, that white oak, Joe, which is the first, or white oak um, self-defense cane, the training cane that's down there. And then there are four in there. There goes from the basic to a really fancy one with some cool features. Go look at that link and you can see what those are. And they're not, neither one of these are very expensive. So it's not a matter of cost. They're both similar in cost. But I want to show you this striking combination. I want you to be behind your cane for self-defense. And I want you to go down, back, down. 
So it's similar to the other one. So I have an angular strike, a horizontal strike, and a vertical strike. One, two, three. And again, what I'm trying to do, what I want you to do, and when we talk about striking combinations or transition from one strike to another, as Tom was asking for, is you're going to use what's naturally happening. You're going to this way, you're coming back, you're coming down on top. And again, because it's so light, you can do it very quickly, very explosively. Now this is different. I had this way, facing out, facing out. Now I have this way. I'm holding the shaft. This crook is still to the front. You can use that to rank across, jab that, stick that right in their ear, eyes for self-defense, and then bring it back through in a strike. So once again, it's in front of the, between you and the threat, your cane, and that's because of the knife. You want the knife to be able to, be, you want the knife to be stopped by the cane. You want to strike. You want to keep them away. See the, the length difference? It's pretty dramatic. So you want to always put the cane between you and the threat. It's a basic principle of cane self-defense or fighting with a self-defense cane or using a walking cane for self-defense is that you put it between you and the threat. And then from here, angle down, vertical or horizontal across, and then vertical, just like that last combination, finishing the same way. One, two, three. One, two. And you should practice these combinations over and over and over again and in both hands. One, two, three. One, two, three. Over and over again. Those are your two basic combinations so you can work on your transition. And I want to go back to the first cane, this hard, heavy cane. And this works with both canes. This next technique, we're talking about retention, how to keep the cane and use leverage to your advantage instead of strength. Let's say the other person, the person attacking you is stronger. You have the cane here and you're wrestling for it. They happen to get both their hands either inside your hands or outside of your hands or one hand inside, one hand outside. And I wish I had someone to show you, but imagine they're holding on to your cane with two hands, one hand, it doesn't really matter. The fight is going like this, the struggle. They're trying to pull it out of your hands. They're jerking on it. And you try to hold it and pull back and they're much, much stronger. It's coming out of your hands. You're not gonna fight their fight. You're smarter than that. You're a martial artist, or at least you're a cane fighter. You're a caner worldwide. You know, you're in, you're in the caner universe and you have been training with your cane and you're smarter and you know techniques that work and you know when they are pulling not to try to pull it back because you know, it's gonna come out of your hand and you don't wanna be wrestling here. Who knows what else is coming up? There might be multiple attackers. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go with it. And you're gonna step in with your feet and also you can extend your arms a little. So you're gonna go with it and then you're gonna turn. You're gonna go with it and you're gonna turn. And all that means is one hand up, one hand down. One hand up, one hand down. Going from horizontal to vertical. And if it's already vertical, go to horizontal. If it's here and they're pulling, go here. Because they're pulling like this, all their energy, all their focus is this way. When you turn like that, they won't see it coming, they won't be able to stop it. This is a very basic principle of weapon retention when it comes to the traditional martial arts weapons, the bow staff, the long martial arts staff, the Joe, the short one. If you're fighting with a walking stick or hiking stick, it's all the same. You're gonna turn and when you go with it, instead of fighting, you're going with it, you're going to then turn and strike. Whichever side is up, now will come down. Now we, that's when leverage comes back into it, and leverage becomes your advantage. From here, you have the leverage, and your whole body pushing on this lever is now coming down into the top of the head. From there, you're going to add another strike, and this hand pushing, pushing forward using leverage with this on this lever, this part from here down, and then I'm not stuck up there, coming forward, this big knuckle, this big hook, smashing through whatever you can smash it through for self-defense. So again, weapon retention, retaining your cane, self-defense cane, you're fighting with the cane, combat cane, tactical cane, it's all the same. They grab hold of your cane, they try to rip it out of your hands, go forward, go with it. As you're going with it, immediately, you're not going to hesitate. Immediately turn and drive. 
straight down. Turn, drive, turn, and punch. Punching through. So it's turn, drive, punch through. Or go the other way. Turn, drive, punch through. Those techniques do work. You practice them over and over and over again. They will work for you if they're trying to pull it. Now, let's say you're holding your cane here. Either way, either the hook facing out or the hook facing back, and they grab your wrist. You can then, since it's over here, here's the threat. He grabs your wrist. You can still turn by simply turning your hand because they're holding here. They're trying to pull your hand. You can turn here. If they reach down and grab the shaft of your cane, turn it up to this side. Now from here, if their hand's here, you do the same motion. You crank down and you follow, follow through. It's always going to be turning for weapon retention on the long stick. If they grab the cane, your hand's here, they grab your hand, hit them with it. Bring it up, drive it into their body. If their hand is here and they're trying to pull it out of your hand, you're here, you just pull it up here and then keep it going down and over the top. Let's say this is their hand. See what that does? Again, they're trying to pull. They're not expecting this turn. That's how that works. Those are just a couple basic things. When I have a partner in here, I'll show you in person. Oh, thanks, Van. I really appreciate it. Uh, every little bit helps, and that helps a lot. You wouldn't believe how much that helps. So from here, turning, pushing, or they grab hold of it. You go with it up and strike down, up and strike down. Good. You're not late. Adrice, it's good to see you. So from here, striking, the very first combination for review, to the groin, through, down on top. Groin, through, down on top, groin, through. Practice over and over, put it in the other hand, same thing, two, down on top. One, two, big circle, huge lever. All that energy is down here from here to there, coming around, devastating force. That's with your hardwood cane. So if you're trying to make the decision, if you needed to review, cane reviews, what's the best cane for self-defense? What are my best options for self-defense cane? Wood, I like wood the best. It's, I'm just gonna be honest. I, feel, I find like the, the aluminum canes, they're fun to play with, but they're too heavy. But this Cane Masters cane in oak has a lot of advantages. This Century Rattan cane has a lot of advantages. I sell both, the links are below. First link is for the, uh, the Cane Masters. Second link is for the Rattan Cane. The difference is one is going to hit harder. You're going to have more bone crushing power. They all, there's a saying that uh, the wood seeks bone. That means it's going to go through all that tissue. It's going to find that bone and break it. And it's going it's to do that a lot easier with this oak training, dojo training cane. With this fast, high speed, highly flexible. I don't want to break it. I can't break it. I've had this for over a year. I hit this thing a thousand times on every surface in here. I haven't broken it yet. So super durable. This you pick up speed. My personal choice, you just saw it. Both. Get them both. With this one, the combination, it's between you and there. We said they've got that knife and uh, you know, today we're using the butterfly knife. Absolutely. I'll show you the sidekick in just a second. We'll finish with that. I'll show you twice because you can use, let's say you're standing here and the bad guy comes up and you need, it's a little higher. You're going you're gonna to sidekick and smash his knee and then you're going to hit him with your cane. Smash his knee and then hit him with your cane. So we'll talk about it in a second. But you, they've got this knife. It's not as long as this, it doesn't bleed. And what I said, the difference with this wood compared to the oak, this that goes in deeper, it slices more of the fiber. And uh, you can't really sand down, because this is not really wood, this is really grass, rattan, and um, bamboo, are really grasses. So this is a grass, it's not really technically a tree, it's not a tree at all, it's a, not really a wood. From here, technique's different. In your front hand, you've got slicing through, coming back, and striking down. Very fast, it's very explosive, very powerful. Yeah, rattan, I love rattan, I love them both. But my, personally, my recommendation is get them both. They're so inexpensive uh, for most people. And if it's not inexpensive for you, it's not. Now, back to the sidekick. So 
Always keep one hand up, lift the knee. The knee is always gonna come up on most of your kicks. If this is your target, you're gonna lift that knee. If it's a front leg side kick, lift and push to the side, right? Get this hand up, lift, push to the side, lift, push. Now it should be in line or about in line. It's a little bit low for me today, but it should be in line with your hip. From here, lift, kick. And if you need to, hold on to something. Here's a good way to practice it. Hold on to something like the back of a chair or a wall and take one leg, swing it in and to the side. That's gonna start to work on flexibility, getting your legs up. It just looks like this. It's just swing in front of my body. And then the other way. And can you use kicks with a combat cane? Thousand percent yes. Should you be able to fight with your hands, drive the knee, palm strike, elbow, grab them and throw them? Absolutely. What happens if your cane breaks? You forgot your cane or they knocked the cane out of their hand or for some, somehow they pulled it out of your hand because you weren't ready to spin and smash. And then you have to go because the fight's not over until you win. You have to defend yourself. Now, back leg side kick. The knee comes up to the front of the body. Comes up to the front of the body. And then you're going to turn and extend at the same time. Comes up front of the body as tightly as you can. Turn and extend. Almost so much that your bum is facing the bag. If you turn like this, that's not enough turn. Always turn all the way over. From here, lift, turn. You'll be able to see it out of the corner of one eye. Always have your hands up, lift, turn. Land, step back. Hold on to something. Lift, practice, slowly, over and over again for two or three weeks. Build the muscle. It's not gonna be easy until you build the muscle. If you wanna add it to other kicks, front kick. Step back, pull your toes back. Practice this, kicking, one, two, and then side kick, two. And I know it's not a back leg to the front side kick, but it's gonna build that muscle. And then throw in the Muay Thai kick or the round kick, four, and then back kick, one. Always look, two. Imagine the guy comes running up behind, grab, smash. Just lift that knee up, smash. Practice your bag kicks. You can do it in a small space. Front, side, round, and back. Over and over again, and if you practice that, even if you're doing a self-defense weapon like the cane, the walking cane for self-defense, you're gonna give yourself better fitness, better strength, more ability to defend yourself with your hands and your feet. And if you have the cane and they come running up real fast, kick them, then strike them. It'll change the fight. It'll build your confidence for self-defense. You need to do all those things. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Thank you.